In this video, we're gonna take a look at ImageLine's new plugin, Destructor, and I'm gonna walk you through the whole plugin and show you everything that you need to know in order to get started using it. What's up my producer friends, it's David with anothermonsterproductions.com. Before we get into the tutorial, there's just a couple things that I wanna mention. First of all, ImageLine just released FL Studio version 20.6, and along with this update, they released this new plugin, Destructor, which we're gonna be taking a look at in this tutorial. But there's also a lot of other really great features that they released in this update as well. And I'm sure a lot of you already know this, but for those of you who don't, anytime ImageLine does an update, they have a YouTube channel where they release a video that shows you all the newest features with that update. And so if you wanna see all the newest features that were released with this update, go ahead and check out that video. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video if you guys wanna check that out. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into it. All right, so as you can see, we have four different modules within this plugin. We have distortion, we have a filter, we have a chorus, and we have a speaker. We do have the ability to turn off different modules if we want to, so we can only use one effect. Uh, we could also completely get rid of that module if we wanted to do that as well, and then we can re-add it there. Uh, we can also move these back and forth if we want to, and we could potentially just change the module like this. So for, if we wanted to just stack like four distortions on top of each other, uh, we could do that, and the signal flow of this particular plugin goes from left to right. We also have an option to show or hide the peak meters if we wanted to. And then we also have a soft clip output option. And so when that button's on, it's applying a little bit of soft clipping to the final output. So by default, when you first load up the plugin, it should look like this. I wanna talk about the distortion first. So if you go down here, we have all these different types of distortion which we can choose from. Most of these distortions come from plugins that are already in FL Studio. For example, we have the Fruity Blood Overdrive distortion. We have the Fruity Fast Distortion. We have the Soft Clipper. We have various distortions from Harmer. And then we also have the Crusher, which is an option from Fruity Delay 3. And then we also have three new types of distortion, which just came out with this plugin. So we have the Wave Folder, which is a folding type of distortion. And if you're like me and you have no idea what this is, this is sort of a graph of what wave folding distortion is. It's similar to how you would get distortion if you clipped a signal, but for some reason, instead of just clipping it and having that hard, flat sort of square look, we're getting the waveform actually folding back in on itself. So I'm not quite sure the differences as far as sound, but it's kind of cool. All right, so we also have aperture, which is a warping type distortion. And then we also have abrasive, which is noise modulation distortion. So feel free to experiment with all that stuff if you'd like. You may notice that as I scroll through different types of distortion, each one of these distortions has different features and different knobs that you can use. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to go through every single one of these and show you what all they do. But if you ever have any questions about what a particular knob does, you can always just hover over it and up here it'll show you what that knob does. And then with that short description and kind of playing with it and hearing what it does, you can generally kind of figure it out for yourself. And then when all else fails, you can always hit F1, which will bring up the FL Studio manual for that particular plugin, and you can just look it up that way. Also, I just wanna mention, as you can see on all these modules, we have an in, a mix and an out. This is pretty standard for any plugin, but the in is gonna control the input volume. The mix is going to control the dry, wet mix. So all the way to the left would be 0% or basically no distortion would be going in. Uh, and then we can go all the way up to 100%, which would be 100% wet or 100% of distortion. And then of course we have an output knob, which controls the output volume after adding distortion on whatever we just added distortion onto. Moving on to the filter. If you don't know, a filter is kind of like an EQ where it EQs out various frequencies, but the difference is that a filter is actually cutting out all those frequencies past a certain point. <laughs> The filter is modeled after the filter on Flex, but they also drew from the Fruity Love filter as well. We have a lot of different filter types that we can choose from along here, which is pretty awesome. And then we have a cutoff knob, which controls the filter cutoff, and then the resonance, which controls the resonance. I don't wanna go through all of these different filter types, but if you're wondering what these different numbers mean on the low and high pass filters, it's basically different slopes. And if you're curious to kind of see what's actually happening with some of these filter types, one thing that you can do is use a spectrum analyzer like SPAN, and that'll give you some visual feedback as to what's actually happening 
with the frequencies that you're filtering out. All right, so next to that we have a chorus. If you don't know what chorus is, it kind of acts like a stereo effect where it takes a single instrument or voice and turns it into multiple voices. And then our delay knob sets the minimum delay between chorus voices. The feedback basically controls the strength of the chorus. The speed sets the modulation speed of the chorus. The depth knob will give it sort of this warbling effect. It's basically creating heavier modulations. The blur knob controls the number of voices. So the higher we go, the more blurred it will sound. And then the color is a low pass or high pass filter. So over to the right, we're actually cutting out some of the lower frequencies and over to the left, we're cutting out some of the higher frequencies. And finally, we have our speaker module, which is designed after the Fruity Convolver. So this module actually simulates different amp or cabinet or, or speaker combinations and is based on impulse response technology, which is a topic for another video. It's something I know pretty much nothing about. We have a stereo separation in knob, which when you turn it to the right, it's going to be 100% merged or essentially in mono. When you move it all the way to the left, it's more stereo separated. And then we also have a stereo separation out knob, which does the same thing. And then we have all these different speaker or cabinet options, which we can experiment with and get all sorts of really cool sounds. So this is going to be a pretty cool thing to experiment with. So I hope this short tutorial was helpful for you and that it will at least get you to a place where you can start experimenting with this plugin and having some fun with it. Hit the like button if you like the video. Also, feel free to subscribe. I have a lot of FL Studio related and production related tutorials on here. And as always, I will see you in the next video.